We are going to have results of the straw poll coming up in a little while. Uh, but before we do that, we have our featured luncheon speaker, Jenny Beth Martin. Uh, how many of you were ever uh, involved in a, in a local tea party or attended a tea party rally or whatever? A lot of you. We had that a lot around the state. Jenny Beth Martin is the co-founder of Tea Party Patriots Action, and she has ever since been crisscrossing the country, working to nurture the grassroots. So let's welcome to the Pennsylvania Leadership Conference stage, Jenny Beth Martin. Pennsylvania, it is so good to be with you. Thank you so much for having me here today. Hey, Colin, Hannah, how are you? Um, how many of you think Donald Trump was the best president of our lifetimes? And how many of you think Joe Biden was the worst president? And one more, how many of you think, like I do, that this country is on, headed in the wrong direction? You, we are in line with 67% of our fellow Americans, according to the latest YouGov poll. And is it any wonder we think the country is headed in the wrong direction? What is happening today in our country is downright frightening. Our borders are wide open. Schools indoctrinate rather than educate our children. They prioritize feelings over facts. Biden projects weakness to the world with his botched withdrawal from Afghanistan and sends signals our military is more concerned about the transgender agenda than protecting and defending our country. As a re result, the world seems on the brink of world war. Russia invading Ukraine, Hamas terrorizing Israel, China threatening Taiwan. President Trump and his supporters are being persecuted Attorneys who represented President Trump have undergone Stalinist kangaroo courts, are being disbarred, and face criminal charges. And we have a two-tiered system of justice. A special counsel found Joe Biden willfully retained and disclosed classified materials, included, including sensitive intelligence sources and methods. In his home, his garage, his office, for decades, but Biden won't be charged because he's a well-meaning elderly man with a poor memory who controls the nuclear codes. Inflation is eating away at every single dollar we earn. Grocery store prices have gone up 36.5%. Everything costs more. Inflation in this state is 18.6%, costing the average Pennsylvania family $855 more dollars per month than it did in 2020. We want these problems solved right now, right this very minute, don't we? That's why you're here at the Pennsylvania Leadership Conference. And let's give a um, round of applause to Loman for doing such a great job organizing this conference again. We want secure borders, top-rated schools that educate our children, a thriving economy, smaller government, a secure and stable world, a government that respects and protects our rights, politicians who put America first and work to restore American greatness and glory, and a world where our children and grandchildren are free to pursue their American dream. Since 2009, the, when the Tea Party movement first began, we've stood for personal freedom, economic freedom, and a debt-free future. After Obama became president, the stimulus bill was moving through Congress on the heels of Bush's bank bailouts. Rick Santelli, a commentator for CNBC News, said our founding fathers would be turning over in their graves and we should have a Tea Party like they did. We responded to that call to action. The next day, about two dozen of us got on a conference call. A week later, we had 48 tea parties with 35,000 people in attendance. Six weeks after that, we had over 850 taxi tea parties with 1.2 million people in attendance. I was on that first conference call and went on to host the Atlanta, ta the Atlanta Tea Party, organized taxi tea parties around the country, and co-founded Tea Party Patriots. When Rick Santelli had that rant, he asked people standing behind him on the floor of the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, 
Who here wants to pay for your neighbor's homes who have more bathrooms than you and can't afford their own home? And the people behind him yelled and booed, no, no. That statement really hit a nerve with me. You see, I was going through personal financial crisis after my then husband's company had, had his business had failed. We lost our house, we lost our cars, we went bankrupt, we're living in a rental home, and we declined money from our mortgage company for Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac bailouts because we thought those bailouts were wrong. We didn't want to be taking money from our neighbors for a house we could no longer afford. In fact, when Santelli had that rent, we were cleaning our neighbors' homes and bathrooms rather than them paying for a house with many bathrooms we could no longer afford. When I say I want the economy to thrive and to get our country moving toward a debt-free future, it's because I know the havoc financial crisis can cause. And I don't want that for my fellow Americans or for America. As the tax day tea parties went from a, mo a moment in time to a movement, our opposition noticed. The IRS was weaponized and targeted groups with Tea Party and Patriots in their name. Groups around the country, large and small, including Tea Party Patriots, were targeted. Donors to Tea Party groups were six times more likely to be personally audited. Groups faced detailed -like audit, a detailed audit-like questions from the IRS and invasive demands for a list of donors, the names of books that groups with book clubs had, the content of prayers, videos of speeches, and back-end access to our website. All of this had a chilling effect on free speech, assembly, religion, and petitioning the government. You know, those rights protected in the First Amendment of our Constitution. Many groups gave the IRS what they wanted and paid outrageous sums to accountants in order to comply. Many more groups folded. Donations dropped. People did not want to risk the wrath of a government agency who had the power to seize property, garnish wages, and put you in jail. Individual supporters would walk up to me at events across the country holding papers they'd received from the government, asking me if they were receiving those papers because they had been supporting us and were being targeted for it. Some of them were veterans and retired military who fought for our freedom. I'll always remember one man in California who came up to me and he had a cap on his head identifying his branch of the military like many of those I've seen today. His hands were trembling as he showed me the papers from the IRS, the first audit he'd ever had in his entire life. With tears in his eyes, he expressed anger and fear from what his government was doing to him and the country he'd been willing to sacrifice his life to protect. I felt determined to continue to stand for liberty on his behalf. At the time, we warned that if IRS employees got away with targeting us, the other government employees would weaponize the government in even worse ways in the future. And boy, were we right. We saw that happen with the Russia, Russia, Russia narrative with President Trump, and impeachment one, and then impeachment two, and then it got even worse, and now Donald J. Trump faces over 100 charges in various criminal probes from around the country. Trump supporters, attorneys, and friends also face indictments from tyrannical government. Some of these people are dear friends of mine, like David Schaefer, who is the chairman of the Georgia Republican Party and a co-plaintiff on Donald Trump's election challenge in Georgia in 2020. Mark Meadows, the House Freedom Caucus founder and Trump's former chief of staff. And Pennsylvania's own Mike Roman, plus electors in various states and attorneys who represented Trump, like John Eastman and Jeffrey Clark. All of them are enduring government weaponization. They have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars, some of them into the millions, defending themselves. All while Joe Biden sits around scot-free with this twisted two-tier system of government of justice that has become the norm for America.
It is wrong, and I will do all I can to stand up for these Americans and fight for a better country and a better future for all Americans. Our activists, we Tea Party Patriots, have stood for a secure border since 2013. And in 2014, we produced a documentary called Border States of America and subtitled, Every State is a Border State. When President Trump first went down that escalator, when he went down that escalator and he said he stood for a secure border and to put America first, his message resonated with our supporters. Today, Six in 10 Americans are demanding a barrier with Mexico. 53% now want a border wall. And 83% see illegal immigration as a serious or somewhat serious issue. And anyone who doesn't like Donald Trump's style needs to understand that to change public opinion so much on an issue that so few people were paying attention to in 2016 takes a very powerful personality. And he was right to stand for these things. Is it, is it any wonder, is it any wonder, we all feel this, the, the weight of this wide open border with more than 7.2 million aliens entering illegally in the last three and a half years. A sudden influx of so many people in our country strains resources. It puts strains on communities, in schools, in hospitals, in the government resources. Now, not only is every state a border state, every county is a border county. And Americans across the country grieve the needless, senseless, unnecessary death of a vibrant, athletic Christian woman who is studying to become a nurse, Lake and Riley. The morning Lakin went missing, I saw a post on UGA's X account that someone was missing. I shared it with a few people in different Georgia activist groups. I know many friends with kids at my alma mater, UGA. I prayed that whoever was missing would be found safe. Later that day, I saw she was found dead, and we all learned shortly thereafter she was killed by an illegal alien. She was from my home state of Georgia, and she was from my home county of Cherokee County, where our office is. Her mom had Facebook posts in December and January of last year and this year about events that she was participating in where she said she was having a great time, but she missed Lakin because Lakin was away at college at the time. Oh, those posts really get to me. Lakin is a year older than my twins who are in college. Not a day goes by that I don't miss them with all my heart. And it's so hard to selfishly want them with you and selflessly know you have to let them go into the world. My heart broke because I can't understand how much she missed her child. And now the thought that she'll never see her daughter again, it makes me ache. I've never met Lakin or her mother or her family personally, but I've learned a lot about her from the news and from friends and family who know her family. One of my mom friends sent me a text shortly after her death thanking me for the work that I do, encouraging me to keep working to secure the border and saying that, she, that we have to get President Trump reelected. She told me Lakin had gone to our children's elementary school. She went to a different high school, but she went to elementary school where my children went. And my friend sent a note that Lakin wrote in first grade. And as I read that note, I realized that Lakin had the same first grade teacher as my children a year before they did. The note of Lakin, the first grader, said, when I grow up, I want to be a nurse because it helps people get better. And it looks very fun to help people. For working, I want to get $100,000, which was a dollar sign with 10, comma, and four zeros after it. I will not be married. I will stay with my family until I die. I would like to live in Florida. Florida is lots of fun, and the ocean and pool are there. 
Lincoln went on to pursue the goal of becoming a nurse so she could help people. And I'm sure she grew out of her desire never to marry. She loved Jesus and was passionate about sharing her Christianity with, with others. And she loved running and seemed to have the most amazing joy of life. And sadly, she died far too young in a death that was preventable. This year, I'm fighting for a better America and a secure border in memory of Lake and Riley. Every single person who is a victim of crime from an illegal immigrant is one too many. Crime and death happens. It is an unavoidable fact of life. Crime that happens because people who never should have been in our country in the first place who never would have had the opportunity to be here had the government been doing its job in securing the border, is wrong. Our government is deliberately not enforcing immigration laws, allowing people to enter this country illegally. Every one of those illegal aliens who goes on to commit crimes against Americans are aided and abetted by the United States government. And Joe Biden and Alejandro Mayorkas have blood on their hands. And so do the mayors and governors of every sanctuary city and sanctuary state in this country. How dare they not stand for America first? We are the most charitable nation in the world. We will take care of our neighbors and people in other countries generously and voluntarily. And we are a welcoming country. Our country is known as the melting pot. To maintain the melting pot status, the one where many cultures melt into the American culture, we we must enforce and follow our immigration laws, not exploit and break them. We must not overwhelm our systems and infrastructure. We must be a country that respects the rule of law, so that those who seek to come here escaping banana republics understand we're not a banana republic. We must secure our border. Those are the reasons I'm fighting today. Each of you has your own story why you stand for liberty for America. We all feel the weight of the world on our shoulders, don't we? We all cherish and love this country. And we know we must save America. To save America, we have to replace the Marxists in the White House with with conservatives who will put America first. And even if we win the White House, that won't be enough because we have to be able to pass legislation out of Congress and make sure that President Trump's nominees actually make it through the Senate. That means we have to hold the House and win and gain control of the Senate. And once we do that, our work will only just be beginning. You think this year is hard? If we actually pull this off in November and win all three, The next 24 months of our lives will be some of the hardest we've ever seen doing everything we can to pass into law and codify laws that will make America better. To do that, though, first, we must secure and win this year. Secure elections so people have faith in the outcome. Win elections so conservatives have a chance to pass the right legislation and sign it into law. Secure and win. That's the mantra of Tea Party Patriots Action for 2024. You have many people working here in Pennsylvania on securing elections. You have election integrity task forces. I saw Heather Honey, and I know she does amazing work here in the state on elections. Um, And many others do as well. Please keep working on this. Check and see if you have vacancies for inspectors and judges of elections, and if you do, can you fill those? If you cannot, and there are precincts that need poll watchers, sign up to be a poll watcher. In 2022, Tea Party Patriots Action recruited over 20,000 people and trained them to be poll watchers, and we'll be doing that again in 2024. Now, let's talk about winning elections. To do that, We have to go to the basics. 
which include local organizing, voter ID, and getting out the vote. When you think of traditional getting out the vote, you normally think of door knocking, text messaging, phone banking, you know, those kind of things where you're talking to voters. Usually those voters are people who you get from a voter list of, of modeled voter data. Usually it's not people who you know, they're strangers to you. There's another way to reach people called friends and family campaigning or relational organizing. We've all heard when someone will say, go make a list of 10 to 20 people who you know and, and make a commitment to get them to the polls. And oftentimes those people go to the polls when you reach out and make that kind of commitment. But traditionally, campaigns have a difficult time figuring out whether and who you talk to and what action the voter took. At its core, relational organizing is building relationships with the people you know and engaging them in the political and electoral process with, and with modern technology, conveying that information to the campaign or groups like ours working on getting out the vote. In years past, campaigns have called this a friends and family program. It's simple, really. Relational organizing means talking to your friends and family to ensure they turn out to vote in the election, and with modern technology, it's even more effective. We just heard from Senator David Perdue. In 2020, as we were all worried about what had happened in, in the election here in Pennsylvania and in Georgia and other places around the country, David Perdue was worrying about what happened and also getting reelected. And his opponent, John Ossoff, was only focused on winning the election, the runoff election. And Ossoff changed how to get out the vote to friends and family. Ossoff's campaign had volunteer and paid mobilizers who could upload their contacts from their phones to the campaign. The campaign would then match the, that mobilizer's list of contacts to the targeted voter list. And then they sit back down to the voters, their own, or to the mobilizers, their own personalized get out the vote list, their own personalized targets of people they already know who are in their phone books. And then the mobilizers would reach out with persuasive messages. It was a runoff, so most people's minds were already made up. It was a turnout game. So they confirmed that they would vote the way that Ossoff's campaign wanted to, which was wrong. They should have been voting for David Perdue. But anyway, they did that. And then they asked, what, what is your plan to vote? Will you vote by mail? Will you vote in person on election day? Or will you vote early in person? And then they tracked that. And then as soon as ballots were going out and early voting began, they reached back out to people based on how they planned to vote to make sure they voted. And they kept texting and calling their friends and family day after day until they knew they voted. And once they voted, they dropped off the list. So by the time that the last 72 hours came around, election day and the couple of days before it, they only had a few people left to get out the vote to because those were the people who had not cast ballots. And it was effective. Ossoff's campaign had 2,888 mobilizers who increased the turnout among their targeted voters by 3.8%, and he won by 1.2%. Other Democratic campaigns have used relational organizing as well, most notably in 2020 in Hampton Roads, Virginia, the Progressive Turnout Project increased turnout by 9.2% using a modernized friends and family program. I learned what Ossoff had done right before the midterm elections in 2022. And as soon as I read the article, I realized despite what the polls were saying, we were not gonna have midterm results like we thought. The Ossoff campaign was brilliant and my hat goes off to them. And the article indicated, and I knew, liberal groups were going to be using this tactic during the runoff. And they did. And the, you better believe they're going to be doing that again this year. So I knew we needed to figure out how we were going to modernize getting out the vote on this side of the aisle. 
I researched and I learned that the left had at least four applications and software programs to do this modern relational organizing. Guess how many our side had? That's right, none, zero. So I decided we better write a program, and I used to program computers before I began all this. Um, I wound up running into Tyler Boyer, who is Charlie Kirk's chief operating officer and runs Turning Point Action, the 501c4. And Tyler said they were building an app, so we've joined forces and we're building this app together, and we'll be testing that app in the Georgia primary, which is next week. So we'll be testing it this month and early next month. And if all goes well, which I certainly hope it does, we'll be rolling it out for the general election. Now, relational organizing is not just about technology, though that's an important component. It is about relationships. So here are some steps you can take to begin right now. Develop relationships with the voters on your, in your neighborhood through traditional door-to-door -door knocking. Be an expert and be seen as an expert on the issues to your friends and family. Recruit and train more volunteers. Build your phone list. Host a house party or neighborhood party, and we've got a house party meet and greet guide that can help you so that you can recruit more people now, and then also so you can talk with persuasive messages later in the year as we get closer to the general election. That'll be two different audiences, people who are likely to be volunteers for one house party, swing type voters for the, for the second one. Now, you're the Pennsylvania Leadership Conference. So that means you're a leader, and you want to be a leader. There's a little bit more that you can do for the general election to make sure that you are ready as a leader. Now is the time to research, organize, and prepare. Like, what I mean is go home and begin this tomorrow and next week if you don't have the following information ready for your county or your precinct. But work with the other leaders in your county so you're not duplicating efforts. For your county and each precinct in the county, there needs to be a plan. You need to know how many votes you need to win. You need to know how many people you need to recruit. How many volunteers do you need for poll watching? How many volunteers do you need for getting out the vote? Who is a targeted universe? When are the local fairs and community events, festivals, gun shows? Where will they be? Who will you recruit to host house parties so they can recruit other people? What are the names and locations of each church in your county, and who is your liaison for the church? The same goes for high schools, but make sure it's a parent of a student at that school. And the same goes for colleges. Have you reached out to the Turning Point chapter, the college Republicans, the YAF, YAL people to build a relationship with them? Those college students are in the front lines of our culture wars. Make sure that you know all that, but here's the thing, if you don't have it, and I just overwhelmed you with a list, and believe me, the list keeps going, we can help you, and Megan and Linda, who are sitting on the front right there, have iPads, so if you sign up with them, then they'll help you, and we'll get you a handbook to help you organize your county. Also, we have what we are calling meeting in a boxes, and here's one that we have for stopping human trafficking. It's um, focused on, it's, the theme is God's children are not for sale. We have handouts that you can give to people who attend a meeting. We have secure and win bumper stickers and some sort of swag. And most importantly and most helpfully, we have a PowerPoint presentation that you can give, two versions of it, an eight-minute version and a 30-minute version. So you can slide it into a meeting and educate people on an issue of the day and how they can make a difference on that issue. Um, in a short little portion of a, a larger meeting, or if you, your speaker doesn't show up, you can blow it out and, and make it go for half an hour and pretty much take up the speaker portion of your presentation. If you would like to sign up to get those meeting in a boxes and you're a leader who has a group, then see Megan and Linda. You also can go to secureandwin.com to sign up. Again, that's secureandwin.com. Now oh, please allow me to close with this. With all that's wrong today, I still have, I just still have so much hope for this great country of ours. In December, America celebrated the 250th anniversary of the Boston Tea Party. 
In 1776, our founders did not have a representative democracy. They were ruled by a king with little means to push back against his tyrannical will without full-on military war. They knew the dangers of consolidated power, they understood the nature of men, and they lived under tyranny. After the Boston Tea Party and after the Revolutionary War, our founders wrote the Constitution right here in Pennsylvania and created a new form of government that empowered people, protected rights, limited government, and respected liberty. The Constitution has checks and balances up and down, side to side. The three branches check one another, the state, local, and federal governments check one another, and voters check the elected officials. Our founding fathers made sure that our country's new government would have the consent of the governed. And thanks to their wisdom, we can change who rules this country peacefully every two years through elections, as long as we do what we can to secure them. When Benjamin Franklin was asked what kind of government the Constitutional Convention was giving him, giving, you all know the story, he said, a republic, if you can keep it. An answer and a challenge. And I'm bound and determined to keep this republic that we love so dearly. Today's government is being wielded against us like a nuclear warhead. This is no time for meaningless talk. This is the time for action. This is the time for courage. This is the time for tireless dedication to the American cause of greatness. It will take every single one of us who loves this country, from the elected officials to leaders like you to the average voter, to check this out of control, tyrannical, modern government that we have right now through our election system. But I know we can do it. And take note, all of you who are distressed and concerned that this country we love and cherish is on the wrong track. You are not alone. Liberty will not die on our watch. We will never give in. We will never stop fighting. Our children are depending on us to be brave, dig deep, and trust in God to protect them from those who seek to corrupt their hearts and minds, to secure elections so they still matter, and to secure the blessings of liberty for their generation. And we will succeed. We will win, and America will win. And we will keep this republic of ours. Thank you so much. God bless you, and God bless the United States of America.